welcome again to our missional community meetings thank you thank you thank you for being there for always coming to share fellowship you know there's a beauty about this missional community just sharing fellowship every tuesday in a very nice way it's always amazing the contents are powerful thank you for the transformations going on in the lives of people the testimonies that we're getting is testimonies of changes the people are doing better people are becoming better in their personal life in their marital life in the work and then of course in their work with god today i'm taking part six of love field church part six and today i'm talking about what loving an unbeliever is not the same way we talk about what loving a believer is not today i'm talking about what loving an unbeliever is not let's pray father open the eyes of understanding teach us that which you want us to know describe in our heart the eternal word that is able to change us transform us and lead us to our world to change agents and become better disciples for Jesus gracious name. Amen. Okay, so today I'm talking about things, five of them. There are many, but I'm just well of five. Five top things that does not mean you're not going to be right doing them. Number one is marrying an unbeliever. This is very important for young people. For young people, after a while, ladies, men, but maybe more, more of ladies, after a while, out of you know, scarcity mentality, men are scarce, or you know, for whatever reason, they just jump into this and then marry any kind of man that they want. Any kind of some even say, you know what, I will convert him and I'll marry. In fact, I'm the conversion agent. God has sent me to convert him. I'm so I'm sent first to the soul to convert him and I'll marry. And some other people they just marry, they say, I, I know I don't need to convert him now. When I marry him, by the things I'm doing, the kind of food I'm cook, the conversation we're going to have, the kind of intimacy we will have, we will come back down the of the man. We have seen some people have played that card, they have not recovered from it today. You do not want to go in that direction. Okay, so marry someone. Some people even quote Bible for you. They talk about how Hosea married a harlot, right in the Bible. But don't forget, God was basically showing them an example of his relationship with people of israel okay and you do not want to be that kind of person that just my own believer some people have people called jesus but oh or Badi. ah you know someone that have a little of jesus a little of uh, flesh worldly things you know a little of uh, fruit juice a little of you know you know now so it, it, a lot of people does this mixture like that. You want to know there are some points you come to your life. You decide, say, am I here? Am I here? You have to be in one place, okay? Marrying anybody is one of the most powerful things that can happen to you. And so you don't want to marry someone you cannot register for this because you will need the fruit of the spirit. It is the fruit of the spirit that is most required in marriage. It's at home. If the person does not have the fruit of the Spirit, how are you going to produce the fruit of the Spirit? It takes the fruit of the Spirit for you to manifest. It takes the fruit of the Spirit to manifest. And it's very, very vital that you begin to rise in that direction and think it. Now, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14, He said, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. He make it very clear for you. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what of fellowship does life have with that person? The moment you are going that direction, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. Okay. So please, please, okay, uh, don't put your service to that one because that is not loving. Number two, that's number one. Number two is unwise and unsafe soul winning adventure. Some people take on some adventure that is very unsafe. In Proverbs chapter seven, it talks about you know. Somebody that went to the house of a harlot and had a harlot talk to him, talk to him until he finally, you know, uh, went like a sheep going for slaughter until he, he, he slept with a girl and all that. And then the consequences, he, in quotes, we're using as an example. That's not what we say he went for, but using as an example. Some people go for so winning in a very bad way. They, 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 they say, My calling is to preach to that's nice, but don't do it alone as a man at, by 9 p.m. in the girl's room. 
you don't want to do that you want to make sure that you are not you know um trying to be too you know dynamic that you not lose out or creating at the verge you know or at least what you follow don't risk your life don't risk your salvation don't put your salvation at risk because you say you are trying to do so i've seen people that went to preach some people you know and then that person ended up preaching their own message to them bad message for that person. so you want to make sure that you understand this that loving a bit and unbeliever does not mean you should now put yourself in a very bad shape. Okay? Make sure that you are not risking yourself. Make sure you have you have to be safe. I usually try to encourage people that if somebody is on top of a devil and another person is on the floor and they are trying to do tug of war, you know, so the person up trying to pull the person down up and the person down trying to pull the person up down. I said depending on the type of uh, all things being equal, if they are the same capacity, they all go to weigh, you know, 150 kg, 150 kg. You know, it's easier for the person that to put the one up down. So what does that mean? In trying to win, so you have to know, can I carry this? Can I handle this? If not, just leave that zone. Leave a place where you can handle. Leave that zone outrightly. Okay? Leave that zone outrightly. Don't allow yourself to be in a zone where you are not you know, going to function well. Okay? That can be a major distraction, a major uh, uh, confusion for you. It can even risk you, even your personal life. Okay. Number three, I call it odd hour ministries. Odd hour ministries. Odd hour ministries. Ministry that can even make you to, like you say, you're waking up by 3 a.m. to go and do evangelism at the streets of a slightly dangerous place. Odd hours. I mean, we take risks for the gospel, we step out there to do great things for the gospel, but you do not want to go into things that doesn't show you how to. Remember our core uh, culture at the Wisdom Place Church, there are four major core elements, okay? We have the first one, which is the wise think. I think this is what I'm doing, is there wisdom in my thinking? Then wise talk, this is what I'm saying, is there wisdom in this my speech? Then you have the wise, um, Deeds, my actions, they show wisdom and then wise dress. These four, you must ensure that the all our ministry, you think through that ministry assignment you want to do before you start doing them. Before you ever start doing them, you have to think through them well. And when you think through them well, it can help you to achieve what you want to achieve in a very massive way. Next, number four is foolishness. Foolishness is you doing something that this is just a, a pure act of foolishness a pure act of foolishness for example all right you are you are you know uh, you are sitting waiting for your flight okay and then you, you have somebody i don't know who the person is and, all, and then you say please hold my phone this is my briefcase all my money dollars is here hold it for me let me get his master and come back and you not being foolish all right so you don't want to be a person that is walking in foolishness. Let me read this scripture for you. I'm sure this will help you. Proverbs chapter uh, 10 and verse number 8. He said, The wise of heart will receive commands, but a babbler fool, a babbling fool, will be ruined. Foolishness ruins people. The Bible says only a fool that is no God. And when you are behaving foolishly, foolishly, you risk your life. Foolishness is not normally uh, accidental. Most foolish actions or foolishness we display is intentional. Yes, it's an active move. Because this is where I define foolishness. Foolishness is my capacity to ignore an information, an insight that could have helped me. When I ignore them like that, I risk my life. So I want to make sure that I'm not risking my life. I am not in a zone where I am providing you know, tools for someone as an enemy to see me as a foolish person. No, you are not being loving by being foolish. No, you are not being loving by being foolish. You are not being over trusting. You are not uh, being loving by being over trusting. You are not being loving by not calculating well. At risk. You are not being loving by not cross checking things. I'm going to give you an envelope and say that this day is $27,000. But don't open it to me. You say, because I don't believe, I can let me not doubt him so that I can convert him. 
then you carry it and then you go home. It's only 2,700. Yeah. You see what I'm talking about? So you want to make sure that you're not walking in foolishness. Here at the Wisdom Place Church, we believe so much in the wisdom of God and God promised to give us a wisdom and the Lord that no man can resist nor can say, I pray for you. You will walk in the wisdom of God. No one will be able to resist or can say when the wisdom of God is at work in your life. The Bible says that the man Joshua received the spirit of wisdom because Moses has laid his hands on him. I pray for you, even though I'm not seeing you physically, but I pray over this media that in the name of Jesus, that the glory of God will rest upon you, the wisdom of God will be upon you. Foolishness is far from where you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, our Father, in Jesus' mighty name. That's, I believe, is a blessing to you. Number five, and the last one is enabling abuse and mistreatment. You know how they say, turn the second cheek right here. Okay. Some people can wait until something is done to them 72 times before they even try to respond. No, that's not love at all. One time somebody did in our car and they tried to spray our car. And they brought the car, the car was not looking for me. I said, please take this in back. That was great. One part of them said, I don't know. Yeah. And I'm going to just become use of our loss. I said, no, 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 this is a business, professional something. I need to teach him how to do things excellently for people, for our clients. I say, sir, you need to take this in back and go and do it properly. He said, oh, the weather was this and that. So I, I did it outside the shed. You know, I didn't like this. Sir. I said, I don't know what you're explaining. But what I'm telling you that this thing is showing two colors. My car cannot have that kind of two shades of a particular color. You go and do it even correct it and bring it back you see that i had to encourage him to do the right thing don't enable abuse don't enable abuse you know matthew chapter 10 and verse 16 in the midst of the wolves be ye therefore wise as serpent and harmless as wolves i read it again he said behold i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves that means as a child of god you are a wolf in the lap of god you know the sheep in the hands of god but know that there are wolves as well Wolves and sheep don't lie down together. No way. Wolves are going to eat the sheep for lunch. So don't allow people to take advantage of you because you're a Christian. Say, ah, you know, I know a Christian. I know a Christian. I better take this bad uh, thing and just go yeah, as your love to cover it up. No. People should not. You should not order for something and receive something different. And because they are hungry, if I say you not collect it, I try to show them love. No, that's not how to show love. Okay? People abuse you, people do things, people mistreat you. You know, I've gone to a hotel one time, the AC is not working. Well. I try not to complain the first time. I'm going to stay there for like three days. I said, no, 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 AC is not working. This is why now can TV is doing like this. I said, no, change this room. Change this room. I, they tried to repair it twice. I said, can you change my room? So I want to encourage you. Don't allow people to put you in that state where you don't have anything to say. You can do nothing for yourself. And then you are in a very bad shape. That can really hurt so badly. That can hurt so badly. And you don't want to be in that state where you will hurt so badly. Don't enable mistreatment, all right? Don't be like, say, therefore be as wise as a serpent, but yet as harmless as a dog. So God wants to have the wisdom in relating with unbeliever. Don't be over trusting when you are being unbeliever because you cannot expect the fruit of the Spirit from someone who does not understand Christ, who are not living the life of Christ. You see all this peace, gentleness, this uh, out there is wolf, so it's dog, eat dog. You have to be able to be wise and minimize your exposure to rubbish. I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, God will help you to love unbelievers and love in the right way, not in the wrong way. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this week your MC not only wins souls, they will bring many more people to God and to church at the wisdom place. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the power of the Holy Spirit surrounds you like a shield and gives you the power of God to become everything you were created to be. I pray for you that in the name of Jesus Christ, from now on, you will see the victory that only God alone has given to you. I pray for you that the power of God will be at work in your life in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. Go and succeed. In Jesus' gracious name, we have prayed. Thank you for being a part of this MC. I look forward to seeing you next week. Make sure you invite your friends over to your MC and to church and join your MC for all the Saturday outreaches and the frontiers. I cherish you and I value you. You stay blessed and let the love of God fill your heart and your 
names. I cherish your love.